Hi, I'm Chris, and in this video we're going to take a look at combining like terms and solving a two-step equation. So here we have, for our first problem, 4x minus 2 is equal to 3x plus 6. So when we combine like terms, that means that we want to combine the constants, or the numbers, with each other, and we want to combine the variables as long as they're the same variable, in this case 3x and 4x, they both have x's, so they are like terms. So we can go ahead and combine those together as well. Now, if you're already familiar with how to do this, then you can go ahead and start getting to work on these problems. But if this is your first time getting introduced to combining like terms, a good strategy is to underline each of the like terms with a different number of underlines so you can keep track of which is which when you go to combine them. So here we have 4x and 3x. We know we're going to combine those together. And here we have a minus 2 and a positive 6. We know we're going to combine those with each other. And this just helps us follow along a little bit more easily if we're trying to pick out the like terms. But again, if you're already familiar, feel free to go ahead and start solving. So in this case, it doesn't matter which we do first. Um, if you want to work left to right, which is a common approach that students take, then here we could add 2 to the other side, and as is the case with any equation, whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. So we have 4x is equal to 3x plus 8. So we've combined the 6 and the 2, we've combined those like terms. And now, we want to leave the number on one side and we want to get all forms of the variable to the other side. So up next, We'll go ahead and subtract 3x from both sides. 4x minus 3x is 1x, which we can just write as x. And we're left with x equals 8. After we have canceled out our terms, separated the variable and the number, combined the like terms to solve and get that x equals 8. Let's take a look at one more example just to make sure we're fully comfortable with approaching these kinds of problems. So here, if we take a look, again, we have 4 and a negative 1, and then we have a negative 3x and an x. So we see these are like terms. They both have an x in them. And these are like terms. The 4 and the negative 1 are constants or numerical values. So if we were to go left to right in this one, we could decide that we want to leave the negative 3x on this side and move the 4 to the other side, or we could decide to leave the 4 on the left and move the 3x to the other side. And it's that second method that I'm going to display now, because one thing that sometimes can help us out, especially when we start getting into more complex positives and negatives, if you move the subtraction of a variable to the other side, then you're going to be adding it, which means that you're more likely to end up with a positive value and it makes it a little bit easier when you're doing your calculations to avoid running into trouble or potentially making a mistake with the positive and negatives. So here, let's add 3x to the other side to start with. So we're left with 4 is equal to x plus 3x gives us 4x minus 1. And now we want to leave the variable on one side and we want to get all the numbers to the other side, all the constants. So we can add one to both sides here. Cancel those out. And we have 5 equals 4x. And then we have one additional step here that we didn't have in this first problem, which is to get rid of that coefficient of 4. Since that's 4 times x, that means we have to divide by 4 on both sides. So we're left with 5 over 4 is equal to x as our solution to number 2. If you'd like more practice, please feel free to watch some of our other videos. You can also visit our website at sandersontestprep.com. Thanks for watching.